Okay, here we have the party van. So we're gonna be going over a couple different sections of the patch. The first section we're gonna be looking at is the input and output effects. Actually, we're just gonna look at the input effects first, which is here on the screen, and it's this whole row. Here, these four are the input effects, these are the output effects. So the first one is the stutter, and it does this. Just takes whatever little grain of audio. Hello. Now there's two modes. There's a sort of glitch repeat mode, which is and then there's an FFT mode. This is just a spectral freeze. Now both already run in, so you can sort of switch between them. Hello. Now the duration of time that I have my finger pressed determines the, the size of that little grain. So if I hold my finger down for a while, I get a very slow repeat. If I do it very quickly, ta. We get that really fast glitchy sound. Now over here we've got the random mode. Um, this is also paired with the rate and the density, which is also probability. So if I turn this on, when I turn it on, hello, it turns on and off randomly. Alright, density is how much it is on versus off, 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 off and off, rate is how fast that happens. And this works this for both glitch and spectral freeze mode. Okay, and here we have the kill mode. What the kill mode does, it mutes the throughput audio. It's useful for getting a real extreme kind of glitchy sound. So, so we try it with a different sound here. Here's the FFT mode. Okay, that's the stutter. The pitch is pretty straightforward. If I engage... Alright, the next one is the lo-fi one. This is a pretty heavy section. So if I turn everything up here so we have nothing, when I turn it on, we get a little bit of a lo-fi sound. So I've got sample rate, which is your regular sample rate reduction. You get this kind of sound. We've all kind of heard that sound before. Then there's two bit crushers. They're both um, doing a different method, so you can do fractional bit reduction, as opposed to going from 16 to 12 to 8 and so on. So I can move it down, it'll slowly truncate the bits. So I've got two different versions of doing that. Our bitwise does um, sort of bitwise swapping and muting of bits. It's a real harsh kind of sound. Tests. And MP3, what this does, it does um, psychoacoustic compression. So basically MP3 style compression. So if I turn it up, you can sort of hear the sound of my voice changes a bit. But in a kind of weird, you know, MP3 type way. Now I combine this with some of the other bits of this section, you can get a real interesting kind of sound. Alright, finally in the input section is the filter. The filter is pretty straightforward. There's a couple modes. There's a low pass, high pass, and resonant filter with frequency and Q. Just as you would get with a normal filter. The only thing that's really different here is this dirtiness. What this does, it adds some noise to the filter coefficients. So if I turn this on. Alright, here's my voice. I'm going to change a little bit. So when I add dirtiness, you get a real kind of filtery distortion noise kind of thing happening. Uh, 
very aggressive sounding filter. Okay, so that's the input sections. Now the next part we're going to look at is the where the where is the party at modules, which is here in the patch. Now there's two identical ones, and it's these eight buttons here and these eight buttons here. So the first one here is the loop module, and it's a. I can start recording. I can start recording. I can. So I'll record something. So I'll record something. So I'll record something. So I'll record something. All right. So, so it's a regular sort of start and stop looper with um, so overdub something. So I'll record something. So I'll record something. Half speed. Reverse. I'll record something. So I'll record All right, something. Now on the interface, so it cuts the sample into eight bits, and I can retrigger from any any one of those points. Record something. Record 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 something 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 something. something, something, something. something. So I'll. I can also define loop points. Alright, and there's also pitch control here. So if I can play it back, something, I can actually have a map the arc. So I'll record something. I'll record something. So I'll record something. So I'll record something. So I'll record something. Alright, so that's the pitch control. Now, I built this such that I can do a lot of things while I record. So, for example, I can start recording a loop and go reverse while recording the loop, and then go back forward again, and then reverse again, and, and then, then go I can forward, start forward again, and then reverse again, and then I can start or half speed, or alter the pitch. I can start really recording a loop, loop and then go back forward again, and then I can start or alter the pitch. Can start recording a loop. So all of that is recorded. Uh, it's basically built from the ground up to be a very speed looper. Now next, we've got the slicer. And the way that all these modules work, they're all sort of intertwined with each other. So this first one, the slicer, can start really recording a loop, loop and, and then go, go well, let me record a normal loop, well, let me record a normal loop, well, let me record a normal When I turn the slicer on, which is this button here, what it does is it's gonna jump around the buffer randomly. Well, let me record a normal loop, well, let me normal loop, record a normal loop, well, let me record a normal loop, well, let me normal loop, well, let me record a normal loop, well, let me still record a normal loop, well, let me 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 record a normal loop, half speed and alter the pitch now this has a couple different controls so random makes it the the timing of it to be random if I turn this off it'll be regular intervals that it jumps over here we've got reverse what that means is some of the when it jumps some of them will be reversed so for example let me record a normal loop 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 let me and this control here is how and I can over double any of this is happening as well Okay, so here's a new loop. Okay, so here's a new loop. Okay, now next along, I've got a granular synthesizer. Now this is, again, it's it. They're all sort of it built in to be integrated together. So, okay, so here's a new loop. Okay, so here's. A new loop. Okay, so here's a new loop. Now playback wherever I turn on the granulizer it will start granulizing that section of the buffer. Okay, so here's a new...
you do. So it's two different processes that are happening, but I'm, I'm basically have this position control tied to the playhead. Okay, so here's a new loop. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here's a new loop. All right, and the half speed reverse and all that stuff is still tied together. Then we've okay. got some controls over here. Um, brain size. The window size. Now this freeze control here, what this does is when it's frozen, which is what it normally is, it stays put. Now if I press two points to define a region, it's going to start moving through the buffer. You can see that I've defined a region here and it's now calling through it. I have to break the set by the speed control so I can slow it down. It can be very slow if I put it all the way up. So it'll slowly crawl to the buffer. So here, so here, so here, so here. And I can use the slicer and the granulizer at the same time. So it's slicing and it's jumping around these points while the granulizer is doing its thing. So here's a new loop. Okay, so next along the road we've got this combine. Now the combine is two sort of processes in one. So the first one, so I've got this buffer recorded here. Okay, so here's a new loop. Okay, so now when I turn this on, it's going to match or rather replace grains of uh, my voice with, well, recordings of my voice in this case. Hear me, but playing back me. So that's the first mode of combine. Now combine, if, I, if I'm playing back audio and I turn combine on, what I get is convolution. So if I turn this on, okay, so well, here's a new playing back. Okay, so here's a new loop. 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 Okay, so and if I'm not playing back, I get the concat synthesis. Now here, loudness and pitch are the weight basically that's applied to each one. So if I turn this down and I turn this down, it'll kind of match each grain a little bit more loosely. If I turn this right up, and I turn this right up, it'll be very selective in what it picks, and it, it may not even find the grain that matches. Now match rate is basically how fast this process happens. So if I turn this down, And the grain size is basically like grain size here. It's the size of the grain, as is pitch randomization. Now, next along the row, we've got pattern. Now, what this does, it's this button here. It records all my button presses for the retriggering, turning on any of the modes or any of the modules, and any knob changes on the screen. Okay, so here's so, a new loop. So I'll record something. So I'll record something. So I'll, now I'm going to make a pattern. So I'll record play, something. Retrigger. Hello, 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 h
you can see I get different things. So what's happening, whenever I record anything into the buffer, the moment I stop recording, it analyzes that based on, I think, about 10 audio parameters was I used loudness, pitch, and spectral weight, and centroid, and things like that. And that maps all of these things, or rather, it changes all of these things, depending on the, the content of the buffer. And what morph does, it morphs between what the current state is and what the last state is. So you can get sort of like a, an interpolation between what it is now and what it was. Okay, then over here we've got a, an identical one of these modules. All right, now if I go over here on this top row, I have different pages. If I go to page two, what I have is this MLR section. And what this is, it's basically simpler versions of the loopers from the Where's the Party app, but there are more of them. So I can record myself, record myself, record my so from some more, so from some more, doing different things, doing different things with my voice, with my voice. Record so myself, here I've got myself. half speed and reverse. Record myself, record myself. Myself, word 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 so between the mutes and the playbacks and now this section I mainly built for if I'm doing sort of pitched material with my voice it's not really very interesting but if I had different sort of pitch regions mapped to different ones that I could trigger them and mute them you can get pretty complex sounds now page three this one's pretty complex I'm not going to get too far into it but here is the Coco Lace and what the Coco Lace is it's an 8-bit modulated delay slash sampler so if I turn it on so if I turn it on hello 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 okay, so it's about one second of audio hello 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 but if I turn it down I can record longer as as with like an analog delay hello hello now what makes this interesting all of these are LFOs and this whole area in the middle Hello, hello, hello. Is a modulation matrix. So if I just turn some of these things on. Hello, 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 I'm modulating things like pitch, playback position, and playback orientation, so forward and reverse. So you can hear I'm modulating it pretty hard, and you can see sort of the accompanying graphic up here. Now if I press this knob, I randomize the LFOs. And if I press this knob, I randomize the matrix. Now this applies to when I've cause now this buffer I've already recorded into, and you can see it here it's frozen because I've got it in the sample mode. This one I'm now writing to the buffer but using the modulation, so everything is being recorded with that modulation. <laughs> Okay, page four. This is, um, well, the chocolate grinder, but here they're labeled as just CD. And what this is, so I'll start recording myself. Hello, hello, testing, testing, recording myself. All right, and what I have here is a virtual CD skipping program. All right, so this represents a window, and you can see there's a corresponding window in the patch, and you can see my voice there. So I'll turn that back a little. Now when I press it, hello, hello, hello. It's playing back hello, to that hello, buffer, hello, but you know I can sort of hello, scroll hello, through hello, it. Self, recording myself, recording myself, recording myself. But more importantly, myself, every time myself, it meets the myself, end of this window, recording myself, recording myself, recording myself, recording myself, myself. You can hear it's doing a little CD player glitch sound. So that's this sort of glitch section. So with that, I can emulate like a, a, a skipping CD. I can also emulate the skipping like or fast forward and rewind of a CD. Right, and there's also a jitter here for the position in window controls. So if I turn this up, it becomes a little bit more irregular in its skipping. 
All right, there's two of these modules here, or rather two of these buffers. Now page seven, um, this one I won't go into very much, but it's basically a couple different instruments. So you can hear I've got seven pitches here. Now the way that this works, rather than being able to tune each individual one, if I leave this page and I come back to it, it's, it's analyzing the audio constantly. And when I come back to it, it'll be pitches that it's heard. Now this is just my voice, so it won't be anything particularly relevant. But the pitches are now different. And I've got a couple different presets here. Now page eight is uh, pretty utilitarian, so I've got input and output controls. So here are my four inputs. I've got sample, I got my and I got my master volume with a sort of meter feedback there. So we come back to page one. So we've listened to the input effects. Now let's take a look at the output effects. So I'll record a new buffer, or a new buffer, or a new buffer, or a new buffer, now my output or a new buffer, or a new buffer, or a new buffer, or a new buffer. So the first one is a shuffle, or a new shuffle. Or a new buffer. <laughs> For the new buffer, right, this also new buffer. For the new, this also has a kill mode. So if I turn the kill mode off, you will hear it the whole time. For the new buffer, 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 for the new. All right, pitches. How much? Uh, how extreme that pitch modulation is for the new buffer all right just like we had with the stutter I can make it turn on randomly for the new buffer 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 Okay, and rate and percentage is the same as the probability up here. The next up, we've got the chopper. So the chopper, it takes every zero crossing and it makes that bit of a waveform kind of repeat. It's a real sort of dirty sounding distortion. Depending on the chop level, chop, 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 and I've got blend control, so fully dry. Um, distortion, pretty regular distortion. The only thing is I've got this choke, which is kind of like a a, a gaby, sputtery kind of sound. And last on this row is reverb. So I've got spring reverb which is the one I most commonly use, but I've got different um, convolution presets here. So room, here's some room reverb, some church, church, church reverb. And then I've got some non-reverb based convolution here. So here's some data. And then you just got regular blended and damping. Now here at the bottom we've got another brain. Now this one is similar that it's it's analyzing audio, but here rather than being buffer based, it's running the whole time on real time audio. So the mode that I have it set to now is once. So the first time I turned every one of these effects on, it set it to something relevant to whatever was happening at the time. So if I change this to every, now every time I turn on the chopper, it'll be something relevant to what was happening. Testing. Tele, 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 tele. Now you can see the numbers aren't very far off because it's it's just me talking. But if I change sources, well, actually, it's still in the same ballpark, but different sources impact it differently because it's analyzing. I, th I think the same thing about ten different parameters. Then the other modes I have are live parameter. So this will change all the parameters in real time. 
So if I engage an effect, uh, let's try the filter. Move, filter, filter. Filter. Okay, the other modes are toggle. What toggle does it, depending on the audio coming in, it might turn effects on or off. Okay, so that's the output effects. So there's a couple other rows on here. Now, this row here, or rather this row here, since I built this patch to be um, mainly for live sampling, let's say something happened and I missed it. So that, that whole session that just happened, um, let's say I didn't have any of it, and I put a new buffer, put a new, I'm just still sitting on that buffer, this row here. Since I built this patch to be um, main, so what this row does, it basically goes, there's a circular buffer that's recording the whole time. So what this row does, it basically goes, there's a circular buffer that's recording the whole. All right, so this is about three seconds in the past, and this is about 10 minutes in the past. Presets here, so room, here's some room reverb. And that's back when I was talking about the reverb. A little now when I press it, it's playing back that buffer. But you know, all right, so any one of these things, and I can play them at the same time. So what this row does, it basically goes, there's okay, a circular buffer that's recording the whole time. time. And the point of this is just that if I miss something interesting here, I can record it. Now, the this would row here. Now, this would row here. Now, this would row here. All right, and this row here, what this one does, it does onset detection. So let's say I turn this Now, this would row here. Now, this would row here. So there I had it mapped to play, but I can also map it to record. Hello. Hello. Test. Tell. Record. Ta. Ta. All right, and I can I have it mapped so I can do half pitch, reverse, um, slice, grain, cat, and random jumping. Now there's two modes of each one of these. When it's dim. Hmm. Hmm. Each mm -hmm. new attack will mm -hmm. toggle the mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. When it's bright, what it does, each attack turns it on and off. So there, it's just finger snap, so that's not terribly interesting, but that's very useful for when you're doing live sampling. You can have lots of things happening automatically as well as you doing the sampling on your own. So that's uh, basically an overview of some of the, the things that are happening in the patch. So there you go.